Hi guys, back on the chorus this week, but since we covered metalwork in the last video, we're looking at wood today and paint chipping with the tie rod wagons. This version from Rodney Stennon, now the Dundas model range, is probably the simplest kit to make, with the sides and frames actually being single pieces. The parts are prepared in the usual way, cutting them free from the spurs and tidying them up with a file. The tops of the body parts do have tiny moulded bolts, so do be careful not to file these off. I'm using my own numbers, so using a knife, I scrape the moulded works plates from the sides. The axle boxes need opening up with a pin drill. If you hold your finger on front of the axle box whilst you drill, you can feel if you're close to penetrating the part. Liquid poly is used to glue the first side to the body. And then the two end parts. Check in that they're a 90 degree angle to the base. The second side can now go on. And that completes the main build. It's super easy. The brakes go on now. This is optional as not all wagons sported brakes. The dumb buffer heads can go on as well. Again, all this is done with liquid poly. The cotton bud is glued on with super glue and acts as a handle for painting. You want to touch the model as little as possible during a painting stage. Nothing's as soul crushing as accidentally getting a fingerprint on new paintwork. Due to the plastic being so smooth, the model needs a coat of primer to give the top coat something to key onto. Without it, you can easily flake the paint off. Again, super sad moment. As per all my wooden models, I use miniature paints number 82 Earth Brown. It's watered down slightly to pass smoothly through the airbrush. I'll dig deeper into maintaining and using an airbrush in another video, so don't worry if you're new to using one or looking to buy one. The main thing to note is more light coats are best, don't be tempted to rush it. The model is left to dry for a day or two before starting the dry brushing process. This is done with a mix of earth brown and light antique white. I dry brush the whole model, which is fiddly on the inside, but the weathering will hide any ugly bits. The wagon is going to have a chipped paint exterior, so the interior is masked off to save it from overspray. So to get the chipped paint effect, you first need to put down a coat of chipping medium. I use Modeler's World Easy Chipping Medium, and I'm sure others work just as well. This is sprayed over the model in a thick coat. Once it's dry, the top coat can go on. I'm going with a colour called Old Christmas Red, as it's quite an orangey red, and it appears like the model's been sun bleached. Since spraying's all done, masking can now be removed. So, to start the chipping process, I wet the surface with clean water and with a dry, stiff brush, I start to rub over the paint. You have plenty of control how chipped the paint ends up, so I'm going to go with a heavy, worn look. You can see how the red's coming off, revealing the wood below. The result is amazing, and I apologise for anyone around me who's had to look at photos of this the last couple of weeks. It was my first attempt and I am blown away with the effect. You just couldn't get that look hand painting. The ironwork can now be picked out in black. At the moment, the black does look too strong against the warm woodwork, but the weathering will bring it all together. At this point, I varnish the model. 
I always use matte varnish for this, which I run through an airbrush, but a rattle can will work nicely if you don't have one. Now the varnish is dry, I move on to the weathering. You're probably bored of seeing this process by now if you've watched my other videos, and if you haven't, why not? But using the same technique over all the models keeps a consistent look to the layout. This is just black paint dabbed over the entire model. Keeping the coat heavy minimises the risk of drying on the model, and being acrylic, it happens quite fast. It's now washed off with clean water. At this point you can control how dirty you want the wagon by washing more or less off. I tend to stay away from the corners and edges and focus on the centre of the panels, not being too thorough about it. When it's dry, you can see how the paint has clung around the raised details. I also kept the inside pretty grotty, as these will probably carry coal loads. The raised ironwork can now be picked out in light attic white to show off the highlights. This gives a bit of life to the dark model, but do try and keep it to where the light would hit. If you struggle picturing this, just shine a light down on the model and paint where it's lit. The water slide transfer can now be added for the number. I use a cotton bud to squeeze out any water from below it. I should have added this before the weathering, but I forgot. Not a problem though, because I can just add a bit more black on top. Once it's dry, it's not noticeable. The wheels are popped into the axle boxes, and the final part of the brake system can now be added. I left the brake lever off until now because I didn't want to get in the way of the paint chipping. Rust pigment is now applied to the ironwork. And it's done. Honestly, this is one of my favourite models I've built. The paint chipping is amazing fun. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss next week's video, for it is 3D printed. Cheers.